hello matrix welcome to another video today we are doing fern hill by dalen thomas so this poem is long but we are going to pull through one of my favorite poems <laughs> i'm lying guys i'm actually saying all of these poems are my favorite so that you guys can enjoy the poems but you know i'm tricking your subconscious mind so that you can watch the whole video just keep in mind Guti, this is one of my favorite poems okay yeah side eye announcements like usual so if you do not have your hands on the study pack please make sure you buy the study pack it is going to be a lot of assistance to you i am selling it for only 80 rand so just email me at examprotips at gmail.com so that you can get your hands on the study pack just email me and just say hi can i please have um the the study pack the poem study pack and i'll give you the details i'll give you the account number and everything for you to get the study pack let's get into the video the title so the title is fern hill the title this poem speaks of the beauty of an actual place named fern hill where thomas spent time as a child it is essentially a reflection on his happy times at this place it is certainly an autobiographical poem i know you cannot see properly um what's written there because okay i tried to find a great color but all the colors were just merging in to the picture anyways more um information on the title fern hill is an actual place owned by um thomas aunt um his aunt from the mother's side um fern hill describes his choice he reflects on his joyful childhood he describes the countryside in an idyllic way so i guess you know the poem fern hill he describes um the countryside in an idyllic way so i have something something for you guys um this is the glossary so just zoom in and see the definition of some words because this glossary is gonna come in handy um it just gives more insight on the words so just zoom it in and take down the meaning of some words you don't understand the summary so as, as you can see my emojis over there they are expressing how you guys are going through a lot currently but as you call up anyways the summary the speaker reflects on and celebrates the joy he experienced during his youth in the countryside he reflects on the freedom he felt and the beauty that surrounded him it is a nostalgic poem the speaker once an innocent child is aware of his loss of innocence and fantasy um, freedom in fern hill thomas presents an idyllic view of childhood on a farm filled with vivid imagery which presents a child's view of the world this is contrasted in the final stanzas with the regard of an adult as he recalls the loss of the innocent and splendor of childhood so guys i am not going to read line by line um like previous poems because this poem is very long and i'm trying to make it short so i'm just going to read the analysis here and there yeah so in line one fernhill says life was carefree during his um young years no one cared line one hill is describing his surroundings on a typical day 
at his aunt's farm so what i just said is not on the screen as you can like hear anyways line two in line two we get a simile um used to highlight that just as it is a fact grass is green it is a fact the house was alive so the simile is letting house and happy as the grass was green so we also get a personification of letting house the house is personified and given emotions in line number three we get to the time of day and where we are we are in a forested valley line four time let me hail and climb time personified as a powerful almost godlike person he is addressing line five golden special or chosen above golden in the heydays of his eyes so the interpretation of in the heydays of his eyes is a time when all was perfect and good moving on to line six and honored among wagons i was prince of the apel town in his childlike imaginings he sees himself as a king over all he sees so that is the interpretation of line six line seven eight and nine in line seven eight and nine we get a connotation of an idyllic time so let's go to line seven and once below a time i lordly had the trees and leaves so and once below similar to once upon a time um just give me a second i just want to check the study notes um okay so in line number seven we get a metaphor the poet compares himself to a lord this place made him feel like royalty so um we get a metaphor there at i lordly had the trees and leaves so he compares himself to a lord this place made him feel like royalty and then line eight trail with daisies and burley line nine down the rivers of the windfall light um the study guide says a metaphor light is compared to a river filled with riches down the rivers of the wind fall light metaphor light is compared to a river filled with riches so just find the metaphor there in line nine so line seven to nine giving the illusion of adam in the garden of eden an idyllic time as i said before we get a connotation of an idyllic time so make sure you buy the study guide because line 10 and as i was green and carefree famous among the barns okay um underlined in red he was young inexperienced and had no real problems or concerns building on the association or link between childhood and nature um, famous continuing with the imagery 
of the poet as ruler over all he sees, keeping in the framework of the farm. Line 11 about the happy yard and singing as the farm was home. Place and time of overwhelming happiness in the poet's life was at the farm. Line 12 and 13. So the interpretation of once only is we are young only once, adulthood never ends. In the sun, the interpretation of that is this time of innocence and joy when the sun shines and all is perfect. So the study guide says... The sun that is young once only. Time is personified. We are all at the mercy of time because we cannot stop time. Line 13. Time let me play and be. Speaking to time personified to be allowed to continue to live like this and not be disturbed by the real world. So Fernhill is allowed to play um, and live. He is allowed by time. Line 14 and 15, gold in the mercy of his means. You can see the explanation of means of his mercy. Time only allows people as much childhood as their lives allow. Line 15, and green and gold, I was a huntsman and herdsman, the calves. So, and means innocent and perfect. Herdsman highlights that this boy looked after cattle. Not the cattle like the ones in the kitchen. I mean cows. And then we get an alliteration of G. And also the alliteration of H over there. And then line 15 and 16. Um, in his mind, all the creatures obeyed or were subjected to him so what does line 16 say sang to my horn you see so um i think you know this he has mentioned before that everything like bowed down to him so it sang to his horn the foxes on the hills barked clear and cloud so in his mind, all the creatures obeyed or were subjected. Line 17 and 18. Okay. Line 17 and 18 together, we get a metaphor. Compares the ringing of the bells to the sound of the water running across the stones in the stream. And the Sabbath rang slowly. So the, that um, is the bell. The bell ring in the pebbles of the holy streams so that is where we get the metaphor compares the ringing of the bells to the sound of the water running across the stone of the stone in the stream in the stream i beg your pardon so line 18 in the pebbles of the holy stream the interpretation of that fernhill is not only seen as a place of childhood adventure but as a sacred place line 19 all the sun long it was running it was lovely the hay so the interpretation of all the sun long it was running Long summer days that were beautiful and seemed to never end. Um, remembering the past. So long, the interpretation of long, he is remembering the past. So guys, I hope you zoomed in your screen because I watched my previous video and I don't know what happened, but the, the slides are only 
on a small fraction of the screen so please just zoom excuse me zoom in um so i'm reading from uh my notes line 12 or well, line 20 and line 21 in these lines everything is so magically perfect that even the chimney sing the smoke puffs seem to be beating time as in music so i have a small joke on this one i hope you guys understand i said the smoke puffs seem to be beating time as in music so if let me explain that so the music comes from the tunes from the chimney so um the smoke puffs seem to be beating time as in music imagine smoke coming out of the chimney the way tando you know tando from tiktok <laughs> you know when um she vapes i'm not encouraging vaping she makes those um those round smoke puffs so the chimney like um is also making those smoke puffs the way tando makes those smoke puffs like a chimney so let's take tando as a chimney um so the smoke puffs are making a regular movement just like she makes the regular movement of those puffs when she's vaping um so these movements um a beating time as in music i hope you understand moving on a line 20 so we get a simile over there comparing the height of the hay to the height of the house this is also hyperbole line 21 <laughs> Yo, I didn't say anyone was a chimney, guys. Please don't get it in a wrong way. I was just making an example. Line 21, and playing lovely and watery. So you can see um, the it, uh, analysis over there. Playing lovely and watery. These words make the air seem like a kind of water full of wonderful things um it also suggests that the ch i was cut off there sorry um child's play is flowing and fluid something that feels easy and endless line 22 and 23 line 22 and fire green as grass the speaker states that the fire itself is as green as grass as the grass this simile captures how vivid childhood and his memories of childhood line 23 the nightly under the simple stars so we get the atmosphere under the simple stars the atmosphere is clear and clear beautiful and pure line 24 as i rode to sleep the owls were bearing the farm away as i rode to fall asleep to and then the interpretation of the words underlined in blue the farm disappears when he sleeps this adds to the dreamlike quality of his memories i hope you guys are still um going with me and you are understanding i think if you take down notes and then you read them after thoroughly you are going to understand the poem line 25 26 and 27 so i am reading I'm reading from my notes, line 25 to 27. The whole night long, the speaker hears, he hears the night jars as well as horses in the stables. The use of the word blessed subtly hints at a, relig a religious um, endeavor. 
the highlight the night jaws are blessed by god as he looks after them so those are like the notes i got from the study pack so let's read from the slides moon long it means night long um, line 26 flying with the ricks the piles of out hay that are stacked in the the barns flashing into the dark the horses move around in the stables in the dark and the shadows it looks like they are flashes of light or color line 28 and 29 let me read something beautiful from the study pack so and and in line 28 introduces a change the waking child in stanza 4 is symbolic of maturity um the farm we're continuing in line 28 the farm like a wanderer white so we get a personification there he wakes up to the sound of the rooster crowing line and then you can see um the interpretation of that whole line lam- number two of 20 like line 28 excuse me and in 20 in line 29 you can see with the jew come back the cock on so it's highlighted in purple so that is the interpretation the farm awakens as the light shines on it the speaker personifies the farm as a wanderer white here the farm is personified as a traveler returning with the jew and a rooster so with the jew signs of an early morning um come back the rooster are the birds that crow in the morning usually at sunrise so the rooster are coming back in the morning with crowing yeah we are getting there line 30 31 and 32 shining it was adam and median the speaker creates a biblical illusion the speaker says it was adam and the median this refers to the story of adam and eve in the bible by using this illusion the speaker implies that fern hill is like the garden of eden a paradise where a child feels at one with nature's surroundings so line 31 and 32 they have the same interpretation since they're highlighted in green watching the sun rise and the day being created so let me read these two lines the sky gathered again and the sun grew round that very day so watching the sunrise and this day being created let's see what your study guides have to say so what i found in what i find in the study guide is sun grew round that is line 32 the sun was shining brightly that very day he remembers this day as it was great significance to him also symbolic of his growing up he was no longer a child line 33 34 i also highlighted line 35 with an orange highlighter so just keep in mind that 34 and 35 go together so line 33 so it must have been after the birth of the simple light alluding to the creation story the separation of light and darkness line 34 in the first spinning place the split the spell bound horses walking warm spinning place the garden of eden 
and the spellbound horses walking referring to the horses of the previous stanza representing the freedom of childhood so i say again take down the notes sit down with the whole poem and read through the notes piece by piece you will understand the whole poem you mustn't cram or memorize the whole poem um, and the analysis word by word you just need to understand the poem when you understand the poem it's easier you don't cloud your mind you know when you get into the exam line 34 and 35 referring to the horses of the previous stanza representing the freedom of childhood it is currently 12 a.m zero 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 and i'm recording this video if i make a mistake sorry line 36 and 37 you can see there i made a mistake so i corrected it with um the red over there anyways on to the fields of praise the fields are seen as a form of praise to the beauty and perfection of Fernhill as he remembers it, comparing it again to the Garden of Eden. <sighs> 37. And honored among foxes and peasants by the gay house. So you can see I highlighted with purple the interpretation of that. It is a happy place and he feels like the boy oversees all he sees. This includes the wild life. I don't clearly understand what is going on in this line, but let's assume Fernhill Fernhill is old and he's writing this poem as an old person. So he feels like the boy oversees all he sees. You know, this includes the wild life. Gay, happy, or playful, the house is personified to reflect how the child felt about the house. It was lively and happy and filled with joys line 38 and 39 38 under the new made clouds and happy as the heart was long so the interpretation of happy as the heart was long means or is rather a heart filled with joy and happiness and then clouds clouds of the new day not to be seen as an not to be seen as ominous in any way moving on line 39 so in the sun born means dawn over and over that means endless days that seemed to carry on throughout the summer. Line 14 and 41. Line 14, I ran my heedless ways. Running, this line means running free without any concerns or worries about life. Line 41, my wishes raced through the house high hay. So my wishes means dreams and imaginations are running wild. And then we get an alliteration of H. Um, the alliteration of H sound helps to emphasize 
the breathless excitement the poet feels. Line 42 and 43. Let's read the analysis. And nothing I cared at my sky blue. So it means there were no worries or concerns in his dreams and imaginings that he saw as real in his playing state. Um, trades and in all his tuneful turnings means this situation will not continue indefinitely and he did not realize how few days he would actually have as i said before these slides were written while i was 10 past 4 to sleep anyways um morning songs morning songs will be interpreted in the next slide as i said in the previous slide that morning songs will be interpreted in the next slide so as you can see line 44 is highlighted in red and line 45 is highlighted in red including morning songs so the interpretation of that is we grow older and as such lose the wonder and innocent innocence of childhood and the ability to feel the excitement that children feel we grow older and as such we lose the wonder and innocence of childhood and the ability to feel the excitement that children feel line 46 nothing i cared emphasizes his complete freedom in his childhood in this line the speaker returns to the present the child becomes an adult and leaves behind the innocence of his past line 47 and 48 i will be reading from my notes listen carefully shadow something negative or something unpleasant has been introduced up to the swallows thronged loaf a high place were full of swallows a high place were full of swallows so swallows are birds line 48 in the moon that is always rising he felt that all nights are bright with the moon which is always rising if you noticed in the previous stanza line 48 was underlined with red pen and line 49 in this slide is underlined and line 50 so the interpretation of that is the speaker wakes up one morning and all the joy has been sucked out of the world looking back on one's life it can feel like childhood suddenly ended especially if an adult's life seem to be miserable that's how the speaker feels for this for this speaker there is a huge difference between being a child and being an adult all the magic of childhood is gone line 51 and 52 the second last line okay line 51 and wake to the farm forever fled this means maturity and the chains of adulthood come all too quickly for the speaker and the speaker laments the lost days of his youth he accepts that once childhood is left behind there is no going back unless the tool of creating is used only then can an individual tap into the joy and freedom experienced in childhood and even then the joy is brief so line 52 oh as i was young and easy in the mercy of his means this line goes with line 53 so let's look at the next slide 
okay okay i lied line 52 was not the second last line anyways line 53 is line 53 time held me green and dying so line 52 if you remember it was highlighted with yellow so is line 53 so let's read the analysis the poet mourning for the end of childhood it was wonderful but short the speaker is still green inexperienced this suggests that people do not necessarily become wiser even though they grow older okay line 54 though i sang in my chains like the sea so i sang in my chains represents adulthood the use of the verb sang creates hope the losses can be captured through his memories the green and gold joy of childhood and the shadowy sorrow of maturity becomes the joy of art poetry in this manner the loss to time is not total it is possible to use art to recapture the happiness of innocent youth this interpretation is giving dorian gray the picture of dorian gray mm, mm -hmm. we are done with the analysis let's get into the form or structure this poem consists of six stanzas each composed of nine lines the lack of structure is used to great effect as it evokes and mimics the way memory wanders and recalls the past in small pieces at a time so you, you will notice that I added a lot of information in this video because some of you are just striking you don't want to subscribe you don't want to like you don't comment you don't want to buy the study guide so you know what let me just help you anyways i'm not gonna read the whole um tone but i'm gonna read like the last two bullets the tone in the first five stanzas illustrate joy and happiness in the last stanza it shifts dramatically from joy to lamentation so you read on your own the four first bullets let's get into the intention and the mood the speaker's intention is to tell us about the joy of childhood and the confinements of adulthood the mood the mood of the poem creates a nostalgic almost with full a feeling of vague or regret or longing the poem was written by someone older who understands that childhood does not last forever as i said during the poem if you're listening attentively i said let us assume fernhill is old and the mood is telling us he is old themes so i have two slides of themes i am going to read the themes in this slide and not the explanation so the themes are childhood joy and innocence the harmony and wonder of nature the power of time and lastly the end of childhood innocence so in the next slide just read on your own and copy and in the slide you'll also read and copy um so just pause the video and take down the themes on your screen or you can just read through just to understand so i also included some questions and answers and also an essay question i'm just gonna play some music and you can just copy the questions down or just read through okay 
guess what we are done bye